Good morning and welcome to worship. Thank you to those of you braving the cold this morning and to those of you at home in your warmth, we're a little jealous. If you're here on site, you should have received the bulletin when you came in. You'll need the bulletin and your cranberry hymnal in front of you. If you're joining us online, that bulletin is available on our website, messiahoaklandnj.org. Also on our website, you can sign up for our weekly emails and have that bulletin emailed right to you. If you're here on site, we have two ways to do communion. You can either use those prepackaged elements in your seats, or you can come forward and receive those prepackaged elements here at the communion rail. If you're worshiping with us online, you are welcome to join us for Holy Communion using whatever bread, wine, crackers, or grape juice that you have at home. Lastly, as it does continue to provide interesting weather and interesting health around this time of year, please continue to worship in a way that is comfortable to you, on site, online, with a mask, standing, sitting, however you feel called. Make worship meaningful for you. That being said, please stand or join in a worship position. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, creator of darkness and light, word of truth, wind sweeping over the waters and the snow. Amen. God, our rock and refuge, we pour out our hearts before you. We have known you, but have not always loved you. We have wounded one another and sinned against you. We have not always recognized the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. Remember your covenant, renew your creation, restore us that we might proclaim your good news to all. Amen. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. God has spoken. The time of grace is now. In Jesus, the reign of God has come near. By the authority of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are God's beloved. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by grace alone, you call us and accept us in your service. Strengthen us by your spirit and make us worthy of your call. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. morning. The first reading is a reading from Jonah, the first chapter, beginning at the first verse, a reading from Jonah. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai, saying, go at once to Nivea, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah set out to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid his fare and went on board to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea, and such a mighty storm came upon the sea that the ship threatened to break up. Then the sailors said to him, What shall we do to you that the sea may quiet down for us? for the sea was growing more and more tempestuous. He said to them, pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will quiet down for you. For I know it is because of me that this great storm has come upon you. So they picked Jonah up and threw him into the sea and the sea ceased its raging. Then the men feared the Lord even more and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. But the Lord provided large fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nivea, that great city, 
and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nivea, according to the word of the Lord. Now, Nivea was an exceedingly large city. A three days walk across, Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, 40 more days and Nivea shall be overthrown. And the people of Nivea believed God. They proclaimed a fast and everyone, great and small, put on a sackcloth. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. The psalm today is Psalm 62, beginning at the fifth verse. We will read the psalm responsibly. For God alone I wait in silence. Truly, my hope is in God. In God is my deliverance and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in God always, O people. Pour out your hearts before the one who is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Those of low estate cannot be trusted. Placed on the scales together, they weigh even less than a breath. God has spoken once, twice I have heard it. That power belongs to God. Steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord. Will you repay all according to their deeds? Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians, beginning at the seventh chapter, the 29th verse, a reading from 1 Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending nets. Immediately Jesus called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. You, you may be seated. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Who 
should ever look back. Signs I was meant to be a pastor. <laughs> Here's a new idea. Our readings for today are an affirmation of our calling as followers of Jesus. It is a declaration that we are part of God's work. And it is an expression of our belief in God, the creator, the redeemer, the sustainer, who calls us and sends us out. Our gospel for this morning will be in Mark for the rest of the year, for the most part. We see Jesus calling the first disciples. There is an immediacy and an urgency in this calling. Jesus says, Simon and Andrew, follow me. And the gospel says, immediately. They left their nets and followed him. Then immediately Jesus calls James and John, and they too left their father and followed Jesus. There's something amazing about these call stories. There are no questions, no concerns. They just leave everything and follow Jesus. But this week, one of the other pastors in the synod said, how do we think Zebedee felt when his sons just up and left in the middle of the work day? It begs us to question what does it mean to leave everything? How do we give up everything to follow Jesus? Really the question, right? You good? Sound good? But that's exactly what 1 Corinthians is telling us. It's saying, leave everything and let nothing tie you down. Not your spouse, not mourning, not rejoicing, not your possessions. Let nothing get in your way of your relationship with God and your mission to share God's love and grace with the world. It sounds great, but what does this actually look like for us? How do we hold in tandem that immediacy? Drop everything and follow Jesus. And this impossible act to drop everything. Do you think you can actually do this? In comes our first reading. The calling of Jonah, which is one of my favorite stories. It's playful and fun, probably one you learned growing up. But the story is so much more than just Jonah being swallowed by a fish. His call story, which we get today, is different. And I find comfort in that more today than I do with the call story of the disciples. So to recap the story of Jonah, God calls Jonah and says, drop everything and go immediately to Nineveh. Jonah says, no way, Jose. I'm going the other way. That worked out real well for him. He spends three days and three nights meditating, discerning, and praying, I'm sure, inside a fish. God calls Jonah a second time. Drop everything and go immediately to Nineveh. Jonah agrees this time and goes out proclaiming the word of God, the Ninevites believe and repent. And God does not destroy the city. Now we don't get the ending because to read all four chapters of Jonah, we would still be reading. <laughs> but the ending of Jonah, he is mad. He is so angry at God for saving the Ninevites, saving the people that Jonah does not like. And God says, who are you to tell me what to do? This calling of Jonah is nothing like the disciples. The disciples were called once. Jonah was called at least twice. We don't know what happened in that fish. The disciples didn't ask a question. They just dropped everything and went and followed. Jonah literally flees the other way. He forgot that there was nowhere we can go that God will not be with us. Now, the disciples eventually learned how to ask the question of 
of Jesus, but we don't really get many emotions out of them. They're pretty just even keel the whole time. But in the story of Jonah, we see fear and anger and frustration. You see Jonah arguing with and questioning God. Jonah's story feels a whole lot more like my own than the disciples. I wonder if you might feel that way too. See, society has taught us to ask first and do second. We want to know things. We don't want to just take that, quote, leap of faith. Society has taught us to put our wealth and possessions above people in our relationships. But God asks us to do the opposite, to put God first, to live with love and grace and faith and hope. But that message doesn't always sink in. Because the world around us so often feels louder. So I invite you today to explore the story of Jonah, to take comfort as you affirm your own call. And maybe you're more like the disciples who you heard it once and you went forth. And maybe you're more like Jonah. Hopefully not actually sitting in the whale, but questioning and wondering. Because Jonah didn't get it right. He messed up so badly he spent three days in a fish. <laughs> and God still called him. God called him for who he is and who he was created to be. Even when we run the other way, even when we doubt and grieve and give in to society, God still calls you. God is always there, ready to restart together or pick up where you left off. God is always calling you into relationship with God, with other followers of Jesus, with the people around you. Because the most basic and core way that we live out this calling is to love God, love yourself, and love your neighbor. I saw something on Facebook this week that says, Jesus says there are two types of people. Your neighbor, you're supposed to love them. Your enemy, you're supposed to love them too. It's okay if you need to be reminded of this. It's okay if you need time away to rest and reignite your faith. It's okay to get annoyed and upset with God. Jonah needed all this and more. But what matters at the end is that when Jonah went around proclaiming God's love, it changed people. When we, too, share God's boundless and inclusive love with the world, it changes people, including ourselves. So be affirmed in your calling as a follower of Jesus, no matter how new or how old, how well-tended, or maybe needing some extra attention. You are called as a child of God. Feel God's love for you. Embrace that love in your own life. And then share it with those around you. Because our calling to faith begins by letting go of what seems sure and known. It endures by holding on to hope in God. And it matures when we reach out for others. So no matter where you are, beginning, enduring, maturing, God is there with you. Affirming your calling, affirming that you are made in God's image and inviting you to encourage and affirm others too. Amen.
Please join me in affirming your faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all of creation. God, our rock and deliverance, do not let your church be shaken. We trust you never abandon your promises to the most vulnerable among us. Give your church wisdom and empathy in its varied ministries. God of grace, receive our prayer. God, our hope and refuge, you place the fish in the sea. Guide our care of oceans and all creatures that live in them. Hold us accountable for actions that endanger water sources and the people who depend on them. God of grace. God who proclaims judgment and offers mercy, be a model to the leaders of our nation and the world. As they lead, may they follow in your way of justice and truth. God of grace. Receive our God who cares for the suffering, cares for survivors of assault and sexual abuse, and sustain all who minister to them, as the martyr Agnes ministered to vic victims of sexual abuse. Keep safe any who live under the threat of violence, those living in poverty, and any of among us who are ill or are in pain, especially those we name now. God of grace, we receive our prayer. God of resurrection and new life, as the first disciples share the good news, empower us in this faith community to be open to your call. When we are uncertain of your call, assure us. When we have strayed from your ways, redirect us. God of grace, receive our prayer. Here you may offer your own intercessions either boldly through your lips or silently through your hearts. God of grace. Receive our prayers. God who holds the saints against your tender bosom, we trust you welcome them into your care. Comfort those who grieve, even as we place our hope in your salvation. God of grace. Receive our prayers. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You may share a sign of that peace with those around you. give thanks for all the ways you offer your time, your talents, and your treasures. Please join me in the offering prayer together. Blessed are you, Holy One. 
for all good things come from you. In bread and cup, you open heaven to us. Make us at this table that we receive what we seek and follow your son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, you we praise and glorify, you we worship and adore. You formed the earth from chaos, you encircled the globe with air, you created fire for warmth and light, you nourished the lands with water. You molded us in your image and with mercy higher than the mountains, with grace deeper than the seas, you blessed the Israelites and cherished them as your own. That also we estranged and dying might be adopted to live in your spirit, you called to us through the life and death of Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember your son, the firstborn of your new creation. We remember his life lived for others and his death and resurrection, which renews the face of the earth. We await his coming when with the world made perfect through your wisdom, all our sins and sorrows will be no more. Holy and benevolent God, receive our praise and petitions as Jesus received the cry of the needy and fill us with your blessing until needy no longer, and bound to you and love we feast forever in the triumph of the Lamb, through whom all glory and honor is yours, O living God, with the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us in whatever language or translation is most familiar, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. I invite you to join me in a moment of silent for, silence for all of you communing now. The body and blood of Christ given for you. Thank you. 
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Giver of every gift, Christ's body is our food, and we are Christ's body. Raise us to life by your power for the benefit of all and to your glory now and forever. Amen. Receive this blessing. God who names you, Christ who claims you and the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, bless you and remain with you always. Amen.
I love that song. Yeah, me too. That was the recessional, I think, in my ordination. Uh, I'm going to invite up to the podium Joan Ludke, and after she is done talking about the benevolence of the month, then Ron Rubner is going to take an announcement. So the song we just sang was absolutely perfect. Go to the world. And our um, benevolence of the month this month is Lutheran disaster response. And that's pretty much exactly what they do. If you read in the paper about a hurricane, a tornado, an earthquake, a forest fire, any kind of a disaster in the US or anywhere in the world, this is the response arm of our Lutheran church. They go, they have teams prepared who are always stocked with supplies. They are often one of the first people on the ground there. They coordinate their work with whatever other agency is there from the Red Cross to Church World United to whatever other agency is working in the area, they coordinate to work with them. And frequently, when the other agencies like the Red Cross, which will come in and provide immediate emergency housing and food, but they don't stay, disaster response will stay. They will stay until there's a plan for renewal, for rebuilding, for how they're going to create life again out of the disaster. So they do wonderful work. Um, your contributions this month are very much appreciated. And just know that whenever there's a disaster, you're there because you're part of the church that takes care of people. Thank you. Good morning. Marilyn, I would just like to remind everyone that in three weeks on Super Bowl Sunday, uh, the members of Messiah will be at the shop right in Oakland collecting food for the for the uh, Center for Food Action, which is located in Mawa. Uh, from 9 a.m. until 3, 3 p.m., we'll be handing out the lists of all the types of food that the, the CFA requires uh, that they donate to the various families. Uh, we're asking for volunteers to serve only the one and a half hour shifts. Uh, we'll need three people for each shift, and that's so for a total of 12. I just checked the, uh, the sign up chart in the Northex, and I have to say, for the first time in a long time, we have a, quite a few volunteers. In fact, we've got nine people signed up already, so I only need three more volunteers. Uh, and that's really, really very good. Uh, also, though, Make sure if you get the time to go down to ShopRite, because even though you're not part of the team, you can still go in there and buy some food and make a donation to, to the CFA. Uh, it would be very much appreciated. Uh, finally, uh, we're requesting that members over the next three weeks bring in cans of soup uh, with a dollar bill wrapped around so that we can donate those also to the CFA. Uh, last year, I don't know if any, if all of you know, but we were close to $1,100 we collected. And it was 86 boxes, I think we collected. And a lot of them were very big boxes. So it was really a very successful uh, activity that we had. So hopefully we're gonna have the same thing or even better this year. So thank you very much. I know those specific numbers for how much we raised last year are in the annual report. So, if you haven't gotten your annual report yet, there are hard copies on the table in the Narthex. It was also emailed out last week. I apologize, apparently I don't know how to use the scanner, and so if you received the first email that only had half of the report, a new one was sent with the full report. If you did not get that, please let us know. Uh, or you can also take a hard copy. When is our annual meeting? Next week. Oh good, you're all awake. Uh, so we'll see you next week for the annual meeting. Uh, if this is your first annual meeting with us, they tend to be quite efficient in time. We will say it that way, so as not to jinx anything. Uh, we will then have a luncheon afterwards, so please sign up and please plan to bring something. Um, it will be really wonderful to gather next week to reflect on the year that we had um, and to just spend some time together after church. Um, so please check that annual report because there are also constitution updates which are available on the table in the Narthex. If you have questions about anything, Please reach out to myself. You can reach out to Eleanor or to Alex, especially regarding constitution updates. 
That being said, go in peace, go to the world. You are God's beloved. Amen. Amen.